Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tut, and welcome back to Intro to Adobe Illustrator. Uh, last time we took a look at creating some basic shapes as well as working with the pen tool, uh, and this time we're going to continue that. And if we have time, we're also going to take a little look at uh, gradient fills as well. So let's just dive right in. Um, we've created the sky, the moon, the mountains, and this back set of trees. So we're just going to name those and we're going to hide them all for now because we're done with them. Um, so we're just going to zoom in a little bit with control plus and we're going to work on some of the foreground elements. Now these, because they're in the foreground, we want them to have a bit more detail. Um, we're going to take a bit more care and time over the paths that we create. So I'm just going to grab our pen tool again and I'm going to work on this little bit of um, rock here. In fact, the first thing I'll do is create uh, these two trees which are in between this layer of forest in the background and this foreground section, um, just because we're working from the far background to the foreground. So let's keep everything in order. Okay, so I'm just gonna put, instead of just basic triangles like the previous trees were, because these are a bit closer to the, um, the viewer's eye, uh, we're gonna give them a little bit more detail, not too much, um, but we're just gonna, with the pen tool, go through and click those points out. Now, I think this, point here in particular is a bit too um, tucked in. So I'm going to grab my direct selection tool, left click the anchor point once, and I can use the arrow keys just to shift that around. Okay, maybe I'll do that at that point as well. Now you can see here at the moment that the rest of these points are sharp, but this one is curved due to um, the clicking and dragging I did to get the edge of this tree slightly curved. Now that's fine. Um, I can choose which one I want to keep. So I can have this rounded corner or I can have these. I can have both, but I want to keep it a bit uniform. So I'm going to go up to here and um, convert the selected anchor points to smooth. And what that does is it gives us a handle that we can then use to tweak our corners slightly. Okay, so not too much, just a little bit. I'm going to do the same here. Just going to convert that one. And I'm just going to flatten that out a bit. Okay, that looks good to me. And we're going to zoom out and that looks fine. Make this one slightly lighter. Now I'm just using these colors for reference at the moment. I'm going to go back through and make sure that they're all um, correct and sort of um, use, you know, gaps of colors between the two in the palette as well. Um, they're just for differentiation more than anything at this point. So we'll just go through and we'll take this tree. Now it's tucked behind the rock, so it doesn't matter about any of that, but it does matter about this side. So We'll do a bit of detail, we'll take a bit of care. Okay, just gonna hold Alt now to create a right angle rather than a curved one. We went through that in the last episode. Okay, just get that handle out there. And like so. Again, creating a right angle, left clicking there and bringing that tree like so, okay, perfect. So just gonna zoom out. Now these two, if we were to use the Unite as we did before to make them one path, we'd get an odd result. Um, it basically wouldn't let you, it would just group them because they're actually separate and not touching. Um, however, I don't want that. <clears throat> I'm gonna ungroup them. Um, and I'm gonna select both of these. Uh, and I might actually just group them manually. I was going to connect them with the path underneath here, but it doesn't actually make sense. So in this case, the group was correct. I'm going to keep that. Uh, and you can see that we've got those two separate elements in one group now, and we'll just call this trees mid. Okay. Now let's work on this rock again, making sure we've got nothing selected and a slightly brighter color. We'll just go through with our pen tool and create some hard edges. Now we know that rocks probably wouldn't have curved edges so much, or um, not in my cartoon anyway, because we want them to differentiate from the trees a bit. So we're only gonna work in left clicks here. And we're just gonna go through like so and create something, just hide those trees so I can see the edges of what I drew before. Uh, just create something that is detailed in terms of how many points it has, but still simple in terms of his actual face area. Okay, like so. Now, there will be shading on this, but we'll come back and we'll add that later. So we'll just call that rocks for now. Um, and now we need to, excuse me, um, 
create this grassy knoll. OK, so I'm going to select just a green again. The colors at this moment are temporary, so it's probably going to look quite ugly. Um, and I'm just going to come through left click, click and hold to create a, a curve. And release. Now I'm going to make sure that that tucks its way out that I need how far I need it to. And it's probably going to need to come all the way down here um, like this. OK, so that's quite a large area, I know, but we're just going to hide that for now and work in some of these tufts that we created. So combination of left clicking and clicking and dragging here. So click and drag to create the curved piece of grass, holding alt to create a sharp edge and then single click to create a hard edge there. Uh, these sort of things will come to you in time. Uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to um, it initially, but uh, it's very simple to use After Effects and you do pick it up really quickly. Um, and of course, if you make a mistake, you can just control Z. That's the good thing about working on a computer. OK, so that probably do like this for so. Um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep it all one nice, simple shape. So we'll block off that one because we know that it's done and we'll merge them all at the end. OK, so let's come back here and create a little bit of grass that's perhaps climbing this uh, this rock. And I may not like this, but it's uh, worth giving it a go. So we'll just to see whether it's uh, we're happy with the way the end result looks. OK. Like so. And I think that'll do for that bit. So we'll just drag our shape around like this. Uh, we'll merge these two together with the Unite tool, creating one shape. And then we'll bring our grass back in to see what we need to remove from this one to make sure that edge is nice and sharp. OK, now I can actually go through and hold this and um, come down to the add anchor point tool with the pen. And what this will do is it will allow me to add additional points to a path that I've already created. So if I were to create two points here and here, for example, I could then use our direct selection tool to select and delete the points that I no longer need. OK, and then with the direct selection tool, choose a point that's at the end of the path. Go back to this path here, excuse me, hold down until it becomes the pen tool again. And then we can add in points like so to make the edges of our grass one. Uh, now, at the moment, they are two separate paths still. So I'm just going to merge those, unite them. Um, and I think that's all the edges that we need that need detail for now. Um, I may add in just a few more smaller variations. Um, just for the sake of a bit of uniqueness and individuality, we'll come through and we'll add a bit of variation. Some of this. Um, now, what I did there, sorry, um, was I went from the selection tool, uh, from the pen tool, sorry, to the selection tool, which automatically gives you a bounding box on your um, path that you just drawn so that you can rotate and squash and stretch and things like that. OK, now that gives us just a bit more variation. So I think we're happy with that. Um, and let's bring in the rest of our stuff to see where we are. OK, OK, this doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to name this grass. And merge it with that path. Um, excuse me. This one and this one, merge them together and call them grass. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on to the front trees very quickly. Now, I'm not rushing this a little bit, but I'm trying not to pander you guys. You've seen me working with the pen tool for a while now. So uh, as we get more towards the more detailed stuff, um, I'm going to take less and less time. So I'm just going to do these trees and then we'll come back and do the backpack, the sleeping man and the rock. I'm not sure whether I'm going to add the fire or not in yet because it will have to change how I do all the lighting, um, but we'll see. Um, so let's just come in and try doing these first of all. The nice curved line. Now I'm going to let go here uh, 
and I'm going to use shift and arrow keys to move that point around, which is quite useful if you're happy with the curve, but it's in slightly the wrong position for you. Um, and then I'm going to just create some nice rough edges of our tree here and see if I can then put a nice curve on the top there. Okay, now I'm happy with that section and I'm going to try and keep these um, sections as separate as possible, even though they're going to be the same color for now. Uh, and we'll see why we do that a bit later when we come to work with gradients and such. Okay, so I'm just going to bring these across like that. This one may have a too complicated edge, but we'll see. Now, at the moment, this uh, point is now below this section, which doesn't matter for now, but it will when we come to color. So what I'm actually going to do is just drag that above it. Uh, you can also use um, control and open and close square bracket to push those around if you look down here. OK, um, or you can right click and choose um, a range. So have a shape selected, choose um, a range, and you can go bring to front, center back, bring forward or send backwards. And that just pushes it up and down in the stack here. Um, by default, anything you draw appears on top of the last shape that you drew. So I'm just going to add these in. The rest of that is hidden behind a tree, so it doesn't have to be neat. And we'll just put that there. And using control, um, close square bracket, open square bracket, we're going to push that down underneath those three sections okay and then we'll highlight all three and group them not merge them this time so group so they're still separate but inside of their own group and we'll call this um, right tree okay hide that and I'm going to do this little tree here and I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of this now um, because it's the same thing so I'll see you on the other side Okay, so there you go. We've got all of our basic shapes down um, using the pen tool to some intricacies. Now, again, not to worry, these colors may or may not be final, although I do kind of look how weird, I like how weird and garish it is. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll keep it or if I'll go for something a bit more similar and subdued to this piece of work. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll do it a bit different just to show you that it might work. I don't know if it will though or not. I haven't made it yet. Um, so that'll do for today. Um, it's taking, it can be a bit of a longer series than I thought, but uh, I think it's worthwhile um, just to give you guys the time to practice working with the pen tool, which is really where you'll spend most of your time in Illustrator anyway. Um, so thanks very much for watching everybody. Next time we're gonna get onto creating intricate shapes, uh, multi-layered, elements such as this flower here um, and the sleeping body and backpack and things in the background um, and we'll by that point have complete control over the pen tool and know it down to a t and we can move on to lovely stuff like gradients and um, applying effects and filters so thanks very much for watching everybody i hope you're enjoying it so far again any questions pop them in the comments below um, or uh, head over to our Discord server, which the link to which is in the description too, um, and ask your questions there. I'm more likely to respond on Discord uh, than I am in the comments, uh, though I'll try and do both. So thanks very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all next time for episode three. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.